we're going to talk about the blackout drive light for a moment here. We can see a hole there and a hole there in this small brush guard. And the blackout drive light belongs right about there on the brush guard. <clears throat> but this brush guard doesn't have any holes in it. So some of these trucks came with blackout marker lights. Some of them did not. Being that this truck was uh, built in October 1942 and blackout conditions weren't really enacted until after December 7th, 1941, uh, some of them came with marker lights and some of them didn't. Sorry, drive lights. So I don't know that I want to drill out my pristine brush guard here and install uh, the blackout drive light. And this light is turned on by a switch we're going to look at in a minute. Uh, the headlights are turned off, the blackout marker lights are turned on along with this one. And this is on the driver's side of the truck. And if you were driving down the road and this light was coming at you on your far right hand side, you're going to have a head on collision. So that's what it was for. You turn out your main driving headlights, turn on the driving uh, blackout drive light, and slow down. Uh, these, these are the uh, blackout marker lights. They're just like running lights on your on your car. They're pretty small. I'll, I can't explain about the window on the inside because you can't see through the the plastic there. But here's the the blackout marker light switch and. The paint curdled. I haven't had acetone to clean my paint gun for a while. And also the main light switch thumb lock or lockout also curdled. So I have to repaint those. I've been using gasoline <clears throat> uh, to clean my paint guns for a little while. And uh, I know there was a little bit of Marvel Mystery Oil in the can that I had the gasoline in, so that's probably why the paint curdled. Um, so I had to take this switch apart. On the panel light switch, I've already soldered these crimped points here. Let me get a screwdriver to point this one and this one, because they were loose. And I checked these, but they needed to be soldered on the top. This one still wiggles a little bit, but it's soldered to the copper connection on the inside. Um, you can see it's a, it's a dimple crush connection, and they're all the same. Luckily, all of these on this uh, light switch are tight but not only did this end of the connection wiggle on the phenolic plate it also wiggled on the on the copper connection so uh, that means I'd have an intermittent intermittent connection and that's not good so I'm gonna put it back together and this plastic piece just drops in there and then the spring drops in there and then the connection the brass connection piece drops on top I'm gonna have to set the camera down so I can do this and you guys can watch um, Yeah, that'll be all right. 
So I did I did clean the interior, the inside of this switch several years ago and bent these little ears once. So we'll see if they want to cooperate today and bend for a fourth time. I had to bend them out once, bend them back, and then uh, bend them out again today. So that makes three. And then I just hold down the connection plate. You gotta pick this up. Oh. These things, these things are a little fiddly. They're pretty easy to get back together. So now I'm going to take a pair of channel locks so that I can grab the entire thing and crimp that ear back down. Okay, good. That one. That one decided to play nice. Let's try this one here. And we'll get those out of the way. Okay. squeeze them together a bit and then crimp it down okay that's that's much better so I don't mind that it you know the fitting wiggles a little bit like that I just <clears throat> need to have excuse me need to have the the electrical connection tight here so little little heat little drop of solder and everybody's happy so that's it for this video I have a little bit of work to do here thanks for watching later moving forward with the work here uh, I looked through my junk and found another light switch and it hadn't been taken apart I don't know where I got it but it had enough of these little square washers <clears throat> that I could install them on this light switch uh, there's a little little leg here And that little leg fits into the hole there. And then of course we just drop our screw in. Let's see if I can tighten this down without it rocking. That's snug enough. So what that does is when you when you attempt to insert your the end of your wire this is an original one it kind of just slips in like that very easily and now you have a um, a complete hold down system to get a good electrical connection. Also, this light switch <clears throat> had this circuit breaker. Um, back then they didn't have the fuses 
like what you'd see today. Uh, in the middle there's that plate. It's very thin metal and when it gets too hot what it does is it distorts and breaks the connection the electrical connection right there in the middle that will open up it's pretty hard to do I can't do it one-handed uh, and then everything gets shut off so if that constantly happens I have to get a points file and get in there and file inside there god dang it focus there um, so if that's if this is the main switch that provides power pretty much throughout the entire truck so if you constantly are tripping this there I got it let's see if you guys can see that it's really hard to see in past my thumb but I got it open if that circuit breaker keeps overheating and opening the, the connection the electrical connection then there's a ground somewhere and what that's doing is preventing a fire an electrical fire so uh, I'm gonna keep moving forward I've cleaned all the screws and the threads and I even chased the threads in the fittings with a 632 tap put a drop of oil on everything so that they don't rust while I'm waiting for a wire harness so I'm gonna go ahead and put the switch panel together should be it's pretty easy wrench I don't have is to tighten this collar I don't know if you can see that there's a little dimple there and a little dimple there 180 degrees apart that you can grab the collar with and tighten it but it's a it's an easy switch so just tighten it by hand and uh, this switch panel had been really messed with um, this whole section over here was all chewed up a huge hole so I had to make some little plates and weld them in place and you can see a little bit of the welding in the back you'll never see that so you know I'm not that much of a perfectionist uh, so I had to redrill the hole and all that stuff so the light switch fits there like that and then this big washer goes on and yeah this collar has a or this nut has a collar on it for the thumb lockout you know I'm gonna switch things around a little bit my left thumbs kind of killing me probably because I haven't been at work for a while and uh, exercising it 
got a flash of my mug too. That's not going to work. Because we have the glare from outside. I just have to grit my teeth and bear it. Thumb. Okay, that's good. here and I'll be back okay so I had to clean some paint off the threads and I must say for a Sunday it's pretty I can't believe how many people are out driving around okay so that's good This is a, a lock that fits on here. I have to tighten this bolt up on the bottom. I'm really having to put my ambidextrous, ambidextrous skills to work today okay so what that does is it prevents the light switch from being pulled out too far and there is a, uh, a pattern so I'm just tightening the little set screw on the knob first the first pull what that will do is it will close the circuit from the battery the generator and the electrical system it'll close the circuit inside the switch and allow electricity to flow to the service brake light which is only on the driver's side of the truck. When you push the brake pedal to the floor, you close the switch through hydraulic pressure in the master cylinder, and that closes the circuit back to the service stop lamp, and the, uh, the red light will illuminate. Um, I can't remember. Oh, I know where they are. Hang on one second.
interesting. Those are, yep, I don't know where they are. They're here somewhere, the tail lights. But we'll, we'll get to them. And then, so, the button is pushed and it's pulled out a second time. And that lights up uh, the main headlights and the driver's side running light, which turns red. And it also keeps the brake light working. And we pull it out all the way. The only thing that lights up are the marker lights in the tail lights and on the fenders. Um, this switch, which is for the blackout drive light, uh, is installed in the dash on the left hand side. Um, way over to the left on the dash and it my dash doesn't have a hole in it either so again uh, referring back to the beginning of the video I don't know that I'm going to install install that so now the switch for the panel light goes all the way over onto the right hand side of the switch or sorry the the panel switch panel oh let me clean the threads off real fast see if I can hang on to this it doesn't get flung all over the place Okay, that's good. Now, there is a flat spot on the bottom where the threads are here, but some knucklehead decided they wanted to enlarge the hole again for a different switch. And since it's going to be covered by the nut anyway. I figured I'll just leave it well enough alone. Oh, it's 9 sixteenths. Paint it again. Okay, getting close. Cripes. I had a 916th right there. says blackout drive panel lights perfect Okay, these two holes here on either side of the ignition switch is for the throttle and the choke. I have to buy a reproduction of them. The choke we know goes to the carburetor. The throttle is kind of like a mechanical uh, um, cruise control. 
um, you can set your your idle with it or if you're driving down a long highway at 35 miles an hour you pull that out and the throttle will stay there and you can take your foot off of the accelerator so that's it for the for the uh, switch panel uh, I'm pretty happy how it turned out um, just another part of the build taking shape now what I'll probably do instead of putting a nut and a bolt in all of these holes here is I'll probably just use two for the time being so that I can drop it when it comes to uh, to wiring everything up but there we go thanks for watching